Huh? No, right at Patrick. Right at Patrick. Yes? And remember that this is the, the, the God that also gets supplied from where? From the liver bed. Also gets supplied from the liver bed. Alright. B1. What is B1 now? In fact, I've shown you this exact thing. What is B1? B1 is the hepatic portal vein, so you must make sure you have the relations there. You see that little slit above? That's the IVC. Okay, so the hepatic portal vein. Um, how is that formed? So in portal hypertension, in portal hypertension, we know that it is possible to get an enlarged spleen, right? Yes. You agree? Because of the the obstruction in the floor, right? What else based on what you just tell me you can get with respect to the bowel? So somebody with portal hypertension can end up with edema of the bowel, of the large and small bowels, right? So edema of the large and small bowels because of the same thing. Um, that person can also end up with being malnourished because you can't absorb anything when you have edema of the large bowel, right? The, the entire mucosa is compressed, no, no, no um, what do you call it? No active process can occur there. Okay? That portal hypertension, guys, can also result in, in, in generalized edema as well. Because that way to disrupt the what? Starling's forces. You agree with that? So it so, suddenly means that the hydroxyl pressure going on a bit more than the oncotic pressure. So Alright. <laughs> it hurts. So good. So let's move on now. B2. Where is where is it formed? So again, you should know that that hepatic portal vein is formed posterior to the neck of the pancreas. Alright, moving on now. Now this one is something that you, you will get in the exam. Surface marking at which pin A is placed is the fifth right rib in the mid clavicular line. Yeah? What about B now? Which vessel is associated with structure? Blood vessel associated with structure pierced by pin B. And you see there, left inferior phrenic. Left inferior phrenic. Alright. So guys, so first of all, do we know do we, we do we know where that thing is, right? That brown thing at the top. That's the liver, right? So where is where is where is pin A? Where is pin A? Huh? Where is pin A? Where you want is it? No, I can put the B touch. So where is A? No, A is the bare area of the liver, guys. Oh, it was so bare. I get it. Come on. B, B, B. B. Huh? No, I'm stuck. Alright, this is a bad idea. This is terrible. Because I have so many things. <laughs> Alright, come, let's move on. Come, identify. I didn't buy that. Next one. What? Oh, so I'm going to read it. Huh? Because I didn't buy that. I'm sorry. 25. Alright. So, so 25A1. We all know what that is, right? No. Mm. That's the pancreas. Even if you don't know, see the answer there. What is that? That's the pancreas. That's the pancreas, guys. Look on the thing. Pancreas. Don't look like come at all. I see the spleen there. Yeah. See the spleen there. 
So which ligament connects the tail to the spleen? What are the structures that are in that ligament? Alright, look on this now. I don't like this question either. And I can tell you who's alright. Let me ask you a question, guys. Look on part, look on A2. Tell me who you think I asked this question. Exactly. That makes sense to you? That makes sense? That don't make any sense to me. What percentage by weight of this organ oh, yeah. in the secretion directly into the blood? Why, why do you know to know that? And then look over the question. Anyway, as far as I'm concerned, that's garbage. Seriously, that's garbage. Why does a medical student need to know that? This is that. Okay, come, come. And in, even A2 to me is, is, you know, but I guess you would like a question like that because it's easy math. So name the, 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 the two structures that contribute to the formation of this organ. Yes. Alright? That's a delicious question. Okay. <laughs> so remember I told you which part of the GI the, the pancreas is derived from, embryologically? Is it the mid-gut or foregut? Foregut. Yeah, foregut. And it's foregut endoderm, ectoderm, or mesoderm? Endoderm. 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 Foregut endoderm. And then now, um, where, where do the islets come from, embryologically? From the primitive acinites. Both the primitive acinites. So first, there were acinites, and then there were islets. Okay? And then the Lord said, let there be light. All right, come, let's go. Identify structure pink A is in. And, I, you know, we don't want to laugh, but I've seen somebody put for this exact same thing, put vagina. Um, no, but it's not wrong with that. Remember, there's large, large and small vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not an expert. I know that they're large and small Oh, oh, oh. All right, come. Come guys, what does it mean arterial blood supply to me? Alright, everybody, superior rectum. Are there any more arteries that supply the rectum? Inferior rectal? And what else? Median sacral. So inferior rectal, short. Inferior rectal, median sacral. Median. Come, 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 come. Hmm? Where it come from? Um, let's, let's, let's give it the mnemonic. It's, it's from internal like that. Do you know this? It's a mnemonic, you know, but I guess what? I can't remember all of it. <laughs> all right. For the branches of the internal. But anyway, come. Come guys, this is a waste of time. Come. So I D B now. Identify structure pierced by fin D. I don't like that either, because guess what? You see the 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 You see the, 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 the paper? The paper is down too far, so you can't say anything. It should be. Yeah, you, you don't know where the pin is. Oh it's it's going like this. Yeah, so you don't say anything. But you can tell, you can tell because it's it's between the rectum and the bladder, right? So, yeah. I don't like that either. Between, no, let us just say between the rectum posteriorly. So the rectum, shh guys, the rectum is posterior. And then anterior to the rectum, we have the bladder and the prostate and the seminal vesicle. In a male, and then the denon denon bilious fascia now is between them. Oh, bladder, prostate, and the seminal vesicle. Okay. And that's why it's so easy to palpate a, a malignancy of the prostate from a rectal examination, right? Because there's not much between the two. But interestingly, the women don't have denon bilious fascia. So you're saying separating the uh, the bladder and the 
this the prostate right and seminal vesicle. So prostate, seminal vesicle, and bladder anteriorly okay. is separated from the rectum posteriorly by the dental fascia. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now that fascia, they say that is a strong fascia that limits the spread of malignancies from the prostate, say to the rectum, or and vice versa. Right? Mm -hmm. But in a female, we don't have anything like that. You get me? <laughs> and that's why it's easy in a female to have a rectal vaginal fistula with feces going into the vagina. It's terrible. Nobody wants that. That vagina is, is to be condemned. It's not a good vagina. Question 27. Two one from the rectum and the prostate and so on and vice versa. So he's wondering how the pistol is rectal. Okay, from it can be from trauma. It can be from a, a surgery. So somebody has a surgery, they have some sort of garbage in the rectum and the surgeon going and fix it. He can have a fistula forming between the rectum and you know what a fistula is really? Yeah, it's an know. epithelial connection. Yeah. You get me? Or I'll give you another way it can form, guys. So some female delivers and she has a tear of the vagina and an intern now is sewing up the tear. Like I have an intern, a friend of mine who did it. And then push the needle and right through the rectum, through the vagina, through the rectum, through the vagina, through the rectum, through the vagina. And sew it up. <laughs> and it feels good enough, I do a good job. <laughs> oh my god, it's just beautiful. No, you can't say we can even know. So that later has to come back because she has soothing. Well, I don't know what happened to her. Anyway, come. Come. B2. B2, guys. What was the worst decision I made in my life to do this thing? What structures contribute to its formation? I see them there. The recto, the retro, prostatic, and the three. Yes, sir. Very good. So, what kind of section is this? Which you will get in the exam. What kind of section is that? Sagittal pelvis. Sagittal pelvis. Okay? It's possible. It's possible. They have done it before. Let me tell you what they will say. You're 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 invited here to read for a degree. Yes. Come. That's exactly what they're gonna say. Twenty-seven guys. Soon up now. Come twenty-seven. Structure pierced by pinna. Yeah, it's it's not so easy to see to be honest with you. I can't see it so well. But that's as you see from the answer, it's the external anal sphincter. So what is your job? Is go and look at the external anal sphincter on a sagittal pelvis. <coughs> What's the nerve supply? <laughs> what is that funny? Huh? What's the other name for that nerve? Inferior hemorrhoid. No, no. Question B now, guys. What kind of epithelium lines the mucosa deep to this area? So it's B. You want to look at B, right? Where's B? B look like it in the anus. Okay? And I guess when they say deep, it's inside the mean, right? Because look, if the pin is in the anus, the epithelium there is stratified its famous keratinine. Right? So deep to it now is the anal canal. And the epithelium there has no keratin. Remember, you look up into S5, right? How does that mean? Put your finger in there. No. Yeah. No. I guess you can put the finger in S5 too. No. Can you say the whole mnemonic? <laughs> Video. But why not? <laughs> so <laughs> Okay. No, oh, man. We're doctors, you know, guys. What's wrong with what we're saying? So you sit on S3, yes? And you wipe S4, and you look up into S5. Look up in the S5. Yeah. Four. And you look up into five. What's S1 and two? So S1 is the skin on the sole of the feet. Of the foot. Sorry, we're feet. S1 and two. S1 and two. Alright, come, come, come. 
All right, so what, so what gives rise to the lining? What gives rise, what's the embryological origin now of the lining of the lower part of the anal canal? Huh? Huh? Um, not that I know of. But look here, guys. So remember now, the upper part of the anal canal is lined by what? Yes. Is this stratified squamous keratinized or non keratinized? Simple columnar. Simple columnar, right? And where is that derived from embryologically? No, no, he's not there. What is the question? So the question is the upper part of the anal canal. Where is that? What is the mucosa derived from? It's endoderm. Endoderm. And what's this? Yeah, what's the entity called? Cloaca. 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 But look here now, guys. But below the pectinate line now, the epithelium abruptly changes to stratified squamous non keratinized And that is derived from proclonium, which is ectoderm, right? Everybody get that? So, so there's a watershed area. I know there's pectinate line. What is it? There's another watershed area. I don't know. No, I guess you could say. No, but I didn't like that either. I mean, don't be like us. No, you're talking about the portal system. Huh? That's not a watershed area. Okay. Where else? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I don't think you can call it a watershed area. So I remember now watershed area now is the blood supply change, venous drainage change, lymphatic drainage, epithelium, embryology, everything changes. Anyway, come, come. All right. Come, well, moving on now. I think this is the last one. Thank God. No, you have two more. So 28. Oh, okay. no. 28. I don't like that. Let's go through research. Don't worry about that, man. Just one thing at a time. So, A, P, A is in the La Beta A9. Interesting. So, I want you to do a nice to write down La Beta A9. For the digestive system, the man can ask you that. La Beta A9. Come, A2. What is the name now? Come, what is the name? Of the space where the structure pierced by pin A forms the roof. In other words, the levator A9 forms the roof of which space? And you see the answer there, is your rectal fossa. So again, in the digestive system, you should have an idea of what this is your rectal fossa is. It's mainly a UG thing, but you should know. Come, moving on now. <laughs> so which contralateral space yes with which contralateral space does the in, the ischerectal fossa communicate with and see the answer there you've never seen it before or sure write it down write it down so ischerectal fossa yes contralaterally with them right we have more again alright so I guess this is the last one after this what about 1 to 10? 1 to 10 what? No, fine, the 1 to 10 wasn't gross, I don't know. But I don't think 1 to 10 is there. Okay. And even if it is there, I'm not going there. <laughs> so A1, which of the pharyngeal arches contribute to the development of the anterior two-thirds of the top? And then, where would you say the, the mucosa? Okay, what if they ask you where the mucosa of the area indicated by PNA is derived from? And then no one, you're telling about no arch. What are you going to tell them? So you can say lateral lingual swelling, or you can say what? Tuberculum impar. Tuberculum impar. So right, pharyngeal one and two, and then tuberculum impar and lateral lingual swelling. <coughs> All right, come next one now, muscle. Muscle. Um, you just went forward. So what's the muscle? All right, good, moving on now. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not on the screen right now. Yeah, but you don't need to be because the question is where is the muscle of the tongue derived from? 
occipital myotomes. Or from occipital myotomes. Something we have talked about before. Okay, we move. Okay, so let's move on now. 30. 30. This structure is an embryological remnant of what? See there? Oh. Right? So what, first of all, what is that structure? Alright. Oh, yeah. Left like Come moving on now. Finish. <laughs> Identify the structure pink B is in. Huh? <laughs> Come. A, B. Left triangle I look at my Come. Where is this form embryologically from now? Yeah, good. So right now, okay. All right, thank you. Very good, April. All right, good. God bless you. <laughs> so we have something else. That's why I said we're rushing like that. Good. Oh, I'm rushing like that, guys. Get bigger now. Probably, probably click the thing at the bottom right corner of the screen. Bottom right corner, bottom right corner. No. Bottom right, bottom right. Bottom right. Bottom right. Bottom right. Bottom right. There you go. Yeah. Oh, that gets smaller. That gets smaller. But then also goes to the top. Yeah. Oh, Lord. That's why I don't say the blind can't lead the blind. No. So you're definitely more blind on those skills. I'm going to buy my own thing, man. <laughs> Alright, look. Alright, come on over, Dad. Come on, sir. That's bigger than us. It's clearly a size difference. Yeah, that's a great jump. Alright. Sir, look up top. There's a zoom thing up top. Yeah, man. You can do anything. Give him time. Give him time. Wait, you don't want to think that you can use your fingers and make it bigger? Yeah, you can. Alright. Wait, please. Not that. No, wait. See if I followed my mind, this would be happening. Can everybody see clearly? Alright, we'll No, I don't like this because guess what? what? On the, 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 no, on the picture before you can see something. I don't want to say what it is, but the frustration is real. Right. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Alright, let's, let's go with up to help, guys. So what is this now? What is this a slide up? So first of all, is it GI or endocrine? Good, so you can approach it like that, right? Your exam will be endocrine or GI. Is this endocrine or GI? Huh? GI, good. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, so this is what? GI. Yeah. If it is GI, remember we say it can either be the GI has three epithelium. Whole GI from the mouth to the anus, three epithelium. We say stratified squamous, simple columnar with no goblet cells, simple columnar with goblet cells. Is there stratified squamous here? No. The answer is no. That means this is not esophagus, it's not pharynx, it's not anal canal. That means it's either stomach or intestine. That's how to approach it, right? Now look, what do you see anything there? I'm seeing some pale things. Yes. Those pale things are a lot. They are goblet cells. What pale things? Uh, see that there? Yeah, yeah. yeah, look. These pale things here. Yeah. See them in this, it's in here, all up here. All, these, all the white spaces. All the white spaces. Yeah, all these white spaces. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so, so the point is, guys, once you see goblet cells, then we rule out some of them. So this is intestine. The only problem we have now is it large or small. And because we're seeing so many goblet cells, it is large intestine. And of course, large intestine has three parts. Rectum, colon, appendix. I'm seeing no lymph nodules, so it's not appendix. Then all I have left is rectum and colon. I've seen no tinea coli. So this is a slide of the rectum. 
Reasonable for an examiner to ask you to identify this slide and give me the, the main the blood supply to this is derived from which named artery. They can ask you that. And it's not hard, it's no big thing. If this is rectum, then it's this superior rectum. Same hemorrhoid. But somebody will say, no, oh boy, that's, that's wicked and all, whatever. That's not a wicked thing. You agree? Alright, moving on. Okay, so that's that. So you can put them on and on. Yeah, but I don't want to do that. Why should I want to do that? I didn't want to answer the question. So you can press next to the thing. No, man, I want to do my own thing. All right, go. Now look at this now. So again, this is so this is this is what the question is going to say now. Name the structure the point tip of the pointer is on. And it's the what? The muscular is mucosa. So, two things I want to ask you about it. A, state its function. What's the function of the muscular is mucosa? And these are all things I've gone through with you guys. So, what's the function? Mine not? I can't even see the sign. Well, oh, 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 I can see. So, put your glasses on, huh? I forgot them. Oh, Lord. <laughs> all right. It decreases or increases the surface. That's garbage. Don't want to come. 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 So put this. So hold on. That's what you're saying, though. So put this secretion. No, no, no. It don't have nothing to do with surface area. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. So remember, I give you one generic thing: motility of the mucosa, and that includes secretion of the glands and the physical movement of the mucosa itself. So the, what's the answer? Motility of the mucosa. So remember, now muscle is for what? Motility. That's what muscle is for. So the muscular external now is what? Peristalsis, which is motility as well, right? So the external is peristalsis, but the internal is motility of the mucosa. Mm. And that is why sometimes when you go on high power, look at the muscular mucosa, you see some fine strands going up into the mucosa. It's actually going to surround the glands to squeeze out the secretion. So with that in mind, what is the nerve supply to the muscular mucosa? Yeah. Mycinus plexus. Mycinus plexus. Mycinus plexus. Mm. What's the nerve supply to the external? Myenteric plexus. Good. So what is that slide now? What do you think that slide is? So, yeah, it, 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 to, I would say to be on the safe side, let's quickly go through it in your head. The epithelium is not stratified squamous, not esophagus, not pharynx, not anus. That means this slide is either stomach or intestine. That when, once you do it that way, you can't go wrong. If you just pick out one out of your head, then you'll go wrong. Now, I don't see any goblet cells there. Right? I don't see no villi. I don't see no goblet cells. But then some people may say they can't tell the difference between folds and villi. So I'll give them that. I say if you can't tell the difference between fold and villi, forget about fold, forget about villi. Look for goblet cells. There are no goblet cells, it's not large, it's not small. That means the slide is stomach. Okay? Then what else can we do now? What else can we do? Or pyloric. Yes. But I don't know if you know I don't know if you notice. I don't know if you notice guys that hold on, I don't know if you notice that just above the muscular mucosa, the glands in that vicinity look pale. You see that? Just above the muscularis mucosa. Jordan, put the finger just above the muscularis mucosa. Yes, all of those glands there look pale. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? I mean it's pyloric stomach. You have any pale glands in the front of the stomach? No. All the glands in the front of the stomach are what? Yes, glands. And them red because the parietal cells and those things. So it's those reddish looking cells. Those are parietal cells. 
No, you can't see cells from here. But well, I mean, I see some reddish things. Reddish areas. Yeah, those look like they're kind of blood vessels. Okay. Right? But you remember now, you know, we're on low power, you can't see cells. You see some things. So why couldn't that be fundus? It's not fundus because the glands at the bottom there are pale. And there are no mucous glands in the fundic stomach. I don't think you should do that. That's not a good, that's a bad practice. Ask another one. All right. So look on this one now, guys. Look on this slide. So what do you say about this slide now? So again, again, guys. This is neither esophagus, pharynx, or anus. So this slide I put to you must either be large or small intestine or stomach. So what is it? Small, 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 So what do you think? Small. So, so hold on now. Remember now, for you to say small guys, you mu there must be something in your head that's for you to say small. It means that you're either seeing villi or you see goblet cells. If you see none of those, if you tell me that this is small and you see none of those, it means are you guessing? So you have to tell me now, do you see villi there? Huh? Do you see villi? Okay, alright. Do you see goblet cells? Huh? I don't see my goblet cells. Maybe because I don't have my glasses on. Maybe I have a problem. One more thing guys, Jordan, Jordan, just stand up right there and tell me if in the lower part of the lamina proper, if you see glands in there. Just stand up and look. Those pale things. Yeah. Huh? The lamina, just above the muscular Oh, okay. Yeah, in there. You see any glands in there? Tell me. You see glands there? No. They're pale? Yeah. So what is it? In the circle itself? No man, in the... Oh, oh this thing is the glass. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 You see that? All right. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And your mucus glands, right? Sure. So that's yeah. pyloric stomach. Oh. <laughs> so what with those folds? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, everybody. So with those folds with PK circularis? Those with Rougain. Rougain. Yeah. Those with Rougain. Yeah. Yeah, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. And as a matter of fact, and as a matter of fact, guys, look here. As a matter of fact, you see that inner circle you're looking on? Yeah, yeah. To me, that's thick. Yeah. And if anytime the inner circle is thick, hyaluric stomach. Hyaluric stomach. What's thick? 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 What's Enough, 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 enough. Yeah. So hold on. Shh. All right, well, I tell you. Come on. You just say talking and everything, and that's the problem. Now look at that now, guys. Look at this slide. Just look at this slide now. Now, as far as I am concerned, there is no doubt that this slide has villi. Yeah. There's only one limit. There is no doubt. There's no doubt about it. Okay? There's no doubt about that, guys. So we don't have to waste time to say this is stratified squamous and that. This thing has villi, so it's small intestine. Okay? And if it's small intestine, it must be one of three things. Can, if, what if I tell you this was ileum? What do you say? Garbage. Good. And why? No pierce patches. No pierce patches. Okay, so I say then it's duodenum then. Garbage. There's no so mucosal glands. Mm -hmm. So that's judging now. No man said. You can't differentiate No, but no, obviously not. So so she's asking a good question, everybody. So she's what she's saying is this. 
is only the two, the first two centimeters of the duodenum of glands in the submucosa. So if you could say this is duodenum, right? But, but my point is this, if they give you this and expect you to say duodenum, somebody else could say it's jejunum and it would be a problem. And it would mean therefore that they would have to put jejunum and duodenum in the, in the choices. And that's confusion, that don't make any sense, right? But, but we know, we know that it's only the, the duodenum is 25 centimeters and it's only two centimeters of glands in the submucosa. But they're not going to give you a duodenum like this. If they could give you a duodenum like this with pancreas with it, then topographically, you should know it's although there are no glands in the submucosa, there's still duodenum. Because the duodenum is not related to the jejunum. Okay. Agree? So you don't think they've put an answer with Wolfenden? No, what I'm saying, in one question, they, could, they, they wouldn't give you two, the two, and, two that of the same thing. That would make no sense. That would be a problem. <laughs> The pointer is on the muscular That's jejunum. Okay? Right. And it's not dealing with no submucosa. Right? Good. But but an important point has just been raised that most of the duodenum has no glands in the submucosa. So we have to also bear that in mind. And so you can get a question just like this with pancreas on it. So I could give you, I used to do that all the time. Be provocative and find a duodenum with no glands in the submucosa, but the pancreas beside it. And ask you, what is this? And if you want, tell me, it's jejunum, that's your business. <laughs> right? Sir. You're not going to get no mark for that. Because uh, the jejunum is not really topographically to the pancreas. Yes, right not true. Excuse me, excuse me, so, so, mm -hmm. over, um, No, it could be. It could be. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. No, I'm saying it could be enough. But if it is duodenum, it is not the duodenum cap. It's everywhere else. Right? You get that? In other words, if I set this in a spot just like that, with no pancreas, what I'm doing is giving myself a headache now. Because half of the class when it's a jejunum, half when it's a duodenum. I have to give everybody full mass. Right? Everybody get that? Alright, come. Moving on, guys. No, that's good. Perfect. Alright, moving on. Good. So is this dead judging them or do you know? Look on the thing properly, please. Look on the slide properly, guys. Look on the slide properly. Now, I'm saying some interesting things on this slide. But I agree with you. It's a funny slide. It's a funny slide. So look on the epithelium. Is this epithelium stratified squamous? No, that's simple columnar. And don't you see a muscularis mucosa? Yeah. But I've seen some interesting things in the lamina properly. So I propose to you that this is for next summer. Yes. You see that? So what do you think those dark things in the lamina proper would be? No, the dark ones would be what? No, parietal cells are not dark. Chief cells. Those are chief cells. Chief cells. Right? So all of those dark things is coming down on the gastric gland. And the dark components of them would be the chief cells. And I bet if you stand up right there and look, you'll see some pink pink cells. Those are the parietal cells. Very good. So, so why would those? In other words, in other words, guys, if this is H and B, which it is, mm -hmm. it means that it's only hematoxin and eosin stay in the slide. Mm -hmm. So why is the hematoxin staying in the chief cells? Protein. Can they produce protein, yeah. which, them have, which means that they have lots of rough ER. Yeah. And the rough ER is ribosomes with acid in itself so because the hematoxin. Yeah. Huh? Yes. So, Jordan, stand up and look at the thing, man. You know what it's like. You agree? Yeah. Yo, I'm going to No, guys, look on, the, look on the pits. Look on the, this, the, the gastric pits. Well, what can you say about them? Shallow. They're shallow. They're shallow. I'm being honest. That was 
No guys, now this guy came from an animal in Spanish town. I actually drew up the Spanish town abattoir, and it's from a pig. It's from a pig. It's a pig liver. It's similar to human. No, it's it's. No, if you ask me, what is the worst liver you can give a student? It's a human liver. If I give you a human liver, you tell me it's pancreas or pituitary or some garlic. But look, the pig liver, the septa are quite clear and the lobules are quite clear. The pointer is in a portal triad. And I want you to see three luminal things. You see the three luminal things? Let me show you something. Three luminal things. So you guys go and use a pointer. So look here now, guys. So look, one. Two, three. Although my professor used to say it's a portal tetral. No, nobody talks about portal tetral because they're supposed to be a lymphatic vessel as well. Oh, however, however, guys, look, from this vantage point, I can tell you that this one is the duct. And how you. That don't look like. No, that way it looks like two boys are from this distance. But isn't it darker? Slightly darker than the others. It is. Good. Good. You don't want none else. You don't want none else. Okay. So once it's darker, what does that say? It tells you that the epithelium is not simple squamous. You get that? So there's a reason, guys. Look, there's a reason why this is darker than this and this, because this and this are lined by simple squamous, and this lined by simple cuboid. So if you, if you listen to Solomon, you never go wrong in a boat. Nobody listens to me. <laughs> you guys listen to the, to the inner voice that's in your head. Salty. And I don't know who that is. <laughs> anyway, guys, oh. so this is the bile duct. And then of the two vessels, this one looks more rounded. So I said, this is the artery and that's the vein. Okay? That's the artery and that's the vein. Okay, so good. So this is the duct here, yeah. that's the bile duct. Alright. And this is just because it has a thicker epithelium. Mm -hmm. No, the artery has a thicker tunic, I'm near the wall. But, but notice that the wall don't have a color in it, so it's just pink. It's the line in it has the color. Alright, come guys, moving on. Mm -hmm. Of this, right? Yeah. So first of all, you will not see the space of this from this is this from you look on this, this is times four. Okay. You know we see no space of this on times, times four. This is low magnification. Okay? It's low magnification. That's what I'm saying. No, look, it can't be lower than that. That's times four. What's the space of this? So hold on. So the space of this is between the sinusoids and the hepatocytes. D-I-S-S-E. And you have written this down before because I've given you in the spot up. Because you don't remember. And the reason you don't remember because nobody is. So salty, boys. Huh? What? No, guys. So Liz is asking me if the, if the sinusoid is too Celtic. Not the sinusoid, it's the, it's the hepatocytes, the cords of cells. It's two cells, like two. So yeah, it's two cells. Yeah, yeah. again, we must do the left one. Alright? Guys, I, I, I don't know, you're saying to yourself that Solomon's full of whatever, right? No. Actually, no. But I, 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 if there's one thing I know well, it's this. I agree. Nobody in this department know that like me. Yes, sir. I've been doing this for donkey's years. I know it very well. Alright? And I know other things well too, you know, but I put this above it. First question. Alright, come. No, take a look at this slide. This slide now. And again, this is times four times four right so 
look how we can approach this thing now. But to be honest today, I look on this and I'm not sure what it is. So if you ask me what is this, and you say, come, come Solomon, I'm going to say I'm not sure. But then if I approach it from, from first principle, look how easy it is to work it out now. I don't know what this is, but I know it's a gland. Because it's lobulated. Right? So and I think to myself, now we're doing digestive, the glands that we're, we have done, we've done liver, we've done pancreas, we've done the salivary gland. Right? So I'm saying that okay, maybe this could be liver. But then again, the lobules in the liver are hexagonal. There's no hexagonal thing here. So this is not liver, right? I don't see no central vein either. True. But also notice that the, the, the examiner seems to be pointing on something. A luminal thing, and it looks like a duct. So if it is a duct, it's an exocrine gland. Right? So we already rule out um, liver. So we have the salivary glands and pancreas. What I also notice is that those he those lobulated things have the same color, right? Yes. From this distance, it's the same color throughout. So they are homogenous. So it means that it's a purely either a purely mucus or a purely serous gland. Mm -hmm. If it's a purely serous gland, it means it's either pancreas or parotid, yes. right? And of course, there's no purely mucus gland. So we can't forget about that one. So I propose to you that it's either pancreas or parotid. I don't see no eyelids of longer, the no little pale things. Wait, see that? No, remember, no, no. This, this, if I told you that this is low power, and if you have any chance to see eyelids, it would be a low power. Because it's a panoramic view. I don't, I don't see no eyelids. Right? So this is the party. Or it could be the head of the pancreas. Well, it could be. It could be, to be honest with you. It could be the head of the human pancreas. Right? But the human pancreas has no eyelids. But again, why would they do that if they, it would mean that it would look exactly like the parity on low power? So they wouldn't do that. Thing. But they could give it to you on high power. And why would they give you on high power? The same thing. What would there would be there that could help you on high power? Huh? Well, Christina, yes, but not that. Central ace in ourselves. So if you get it on high power, you can see central ace in ourselves. Right? Anyway, that's parity, guys. So guess what? It is not unreasonable, therefore, for somebody to give you this and ask you for the parasympathetic innovation. Everybody get that? Now, this is a question I've seen Mr. Gardner ask. Lymph from this gland drains directly to which set of nodes. Not to which set of nodes, you know. The word directly is important and he underlines the word directly. So lymph from the parotid drains to which set of nodes first? I bet you nobody may tell me. So tell me. No man, not directly. So what 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 is the first set of nodes that lymph from the parotid drain to? I thought it was the parotid nose. The parotid nose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. The parotid nose. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Come, guys. You see, every now is it You put me one slide. <laughs> If we never make so much noise, we're gone. Quint is nice already. I know. Oh no. Exactly. <laughs> Alright, we just have to go back to this one now. <laughs> oh, that's not it. So you're missing 15, so I forgot the 18. Alright. Alright! That one now. No guys. No guys. This one now. This one. I expect everybody to get this slide. Yeah. 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 So just look, take a good look. So what we're seeing, a structure crossed by the pointer, that mm. seems to be uniformly dark. It's lobulated. Good. And then the structure on the right seems to be what? GI. Yeah. Oh, good. No, no, stand up there. Stand up there for me. Yes. And you see the pink thing in the middle? Put your finger on it. 
That? What is that? Muscularis. That's the muscularis. That's the muscularis. Put your, your point, put your finger on the outer longitude now. Outer longitude now. See there? Yeah, and that's inner circular, right? Come in further now. Come in further. Further. Put right. Go back. Right. What is that? Those are the building our glands. Those are the burner glands. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's the one of the and that's the pancreas over there. Never seen it before. Oh, that makes oh, perfect sense. Wow. That makes perfect huh? sense. Yes. Don't have to have some mucus. Okay, good. So, what is up for not related to the pancreas? So, not so good. Yeah. You sure you don't want to wait on the wake Guys, I understand. I agree with you, you know, because it's a lot of stuff you have to do. Medicine is terrible. But it's rough. But it's just that you have to get these in your head. I have given you this slide before. No. You say you don't remember I have given you before. You have taken the pictures, go back and look at the archive. I look here. Look here. Look. Remember I gave you the hepatopancreatic duct? Yes. Is this slide I use? Oh Remember you looked on it about four times. I remember it. Like Alwin, like Alwin, 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 like I don't know what that thing on the left is, on the right is. It looks funny, I don't know. But I know that thing on the left is, is uniformly stained, purple. It is lobulated. That means it's a gland. And if it is uniformly purple, it's a purely serous gland. The only gland it could be? Parotid or pancreas. Parotid not related to the bowel. So although I don't know which bowel this is, it's Part can be part of part is not related to boil. That boil could be a suffocus as far as I care, I don't know. But if this is pancreas, this boil must be duodenum. So you see, I start, I, what I used to diagnose this slide, the thing on the left. And then now when I start looking more closely, now I say, this is pancreas, hold on. Maybe this is, oh, I'm seeing some glands in the submucosa. You get me? All right, come on, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Now somebody just pointed out something important now. Diagnostic features of the pancreas include the presence of Pacinian corpuscles. Mm -hmm. Remember we saw, we saw them? Yes. No, 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 I'm just saying, I mean, this is clear of any, but I'm just saying, don't forget you can find Pacinian corpuscles in the pancreas because of its topographical relation. You get that? Because of its topographical relation to the stomach. All right. So let's move on. Guys, yeah, if you give me a chance to learn a woody for histology, but you're not giving me a chance. Now let's go on that now. Now this is another slide of the same, this is the third slide of, the, of this sort I've shown you. And again, what I want you to observe, that this is the GI tract, I want you to also observe the thickness of the inner circular. All right? The thickness of the inner circular. So just by that alone, I know what it's like. I, I have not even looked on the mucosa yet. But I agree with what somebody said. There's no stratified squamous there, and there's no goblet cell. What I mean? This is stomach. Well, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Then, oh, Lord. Then, Lord. Then, Lord. Then, Lord. Then, Lord. Then, Lord. Oh, Stephanie just said, did I do it? Now, guys. Now, guys. Sir, I'm just going to Jordan, wait, talk first. Yes? Let's see people start on the goblet cell. What? <laughs> the, thing, the thing projecting? <laughs> okay. All right. So Jordan made a good point. That look like what you say anymore? <laughs> okay, that's two. So much more. <laughs> In other words, look, if, if, if what he saw was a goblet cell, and, it, and that would mean that it would be intestine, that means it could either be large or small intestine. If it were large, you'd find thousands of those. You only see two. So let us say it could be small then. You would still have to find some more on the other side, right? And I don't say any. I don't say any. But what I'm what I am seeing though guys are deep pits. 
Yeah. So, so, so this is now pylori because in a circular stick and the pins are deep. So, remember now, you know, remember now. Um, there are lots of things about me that make me me. But if one day you only say, it, let us say there are 12 things about me, and one day you only say 10, it's still me. Right? Yeah. All right, guys. All right. Now. I was hoping nobody pointed to So, so there are lots of things on this slide. This is an excellent slide. Excellent slide. So, first of all, what is this a slide of? Okay, let me not ask you anything. Um, Liz just said no, something to me. No, no, no. I agree with you. I agree with you. Okay, thank God. Guys, Liz, Liz said something that I never thought about. Oh. And so I now agree with her. Right? And tell me if you agree with me. No, Remember, no, I'm not infallible. <laughs> As I am telling you that this is a slide of the posterior third of the tongue. I'm done. <laughs> okay, guys, so this is the posterior third of the tongue. All right. Okay, posterior third. Interesting. So you agree? Why posterior third? Oh, I look, tell me why. All right. Okay, look, guys. So remember, I told you guys that the tongue has three sets of glands. It has some mixed glands in the tip. Oh yeah. Now we call anterior lingual glands. It has purely serous in the anterior two thirds, but in front of the sulcus terminalis. And those purely serous glands are the one And then it has purely mucus in the posterior third. I'm seeing purely mucus here. So based on that now, I'm saying it's the post. Don't write it down yet. Based on that, I'm saying it's the posterior third of the tongue. I'm asking if you agree with me. No. Huh? No. But why not? So you say it. Because it feels like there's a trick to it. Purely mucus. Oh, the, the posterior lingual glands are purely mucus. Yeah. So I, I'm saying, guys, if you see purely mucus glands in the tongue, then it's posterior third. But of course, it has to be tongue. But it's not tongue. Right? So the question is this. It's not tongue. Yeah. So how do you know if it's tongue or not? Look on the direction of those muscle fibers. No muscle. No muscle. You don't see them going this way. Yeah. Guys, in the tongue, there are fibers coming this way of oblique fibers and transverse fibers. I am not seeing that there. So this is not tongue. We knew it. Too good to be true. So tell me what it is. Tell me what it is. Look on the thing. Look, it's stratified squamous. So look here now. This is stratified squamous, meaning that it's exposed to abrasion. The fibers are long, which means the skeletal muscle. That means whatever structure this is, it's under voluntary movement. And it's exposed to abrasion. So what is it? So what is it? Well, it could be the only problem I have. I don't see the muscular as mucosa. So it's oropharynx. But, but you see, you know what my, my problem with you is though? You guys are not approaching this thing like I tell you to approach it. So you just say, okay, that look like a uh, uh, vagina. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't do that. Kind of vagina you see in Don't do that. <laughs> Guys, that's oropharynx. Oropharynx. So come now. If this is oropharynx, what's the motor supply to the muscle cross by the pointer? Pharyngeal plexus. Pharyngeal plexus. Or you can say vagus if you want. Where are the cell bodies for these nerve fibers located? Yeah. Nucleus ambiguous. Good. Nucleus ambiguous. What about the sensory supply to the mucosa? Glossopharyngeal. Or you can say pharyngeal plexus again. Good. Now, why would you have those mucus glands in the pharynx? Sir, it's not uncommon to find glands in the esophagus and the, and, and the pharynx. Why? Remember, when you swallow, you, know, you don't want a friction. Right? So there are mucus there. No problem. What is that thing the pointer is in though? Hmm? It have a dark rim, right? And look, look on the right side, look like it's going into the glands or coming out of the glands. What is that? It's a duck. It's a duck. Anyway, I'm glad that I have ducks, right? No, guys. I want to tell you something interesting now. This is a slide that we have set a lot. 
to confuse people. And look here, let me tell you why. You're done. Sir, you can use the point. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, guys, look. So this is the muscularis, right? Yes. But this can all easily trick people that it could be a muscularis mucosa. Right? So if you're not careful, you could say this is the lamina propria. That's the muscularis mucosa. This is the submucosa. And that's the muscularis external. Right? But if this were the muscularis mucosa, right? What? Do you have any criticism about it? Yes. What? Yes. Not well, it don't have to be continuous. Remember when the esophagus just form, the muscularis mucosa just appear as little mm. patches. They mm. go down further and I get more continuous. Sure. Right? So that could be muscularis mucosa. The only problem I have with it, the fiber's too long, you see this? Smooth muscle. Remember now, if it's muscularis mucosa, it would have to be smooth. Because it's not, it can't be skeletal. Because it's under involuntary movement. Yeah. And smooth muscle fibers are not long. Look, that would be a fiber, not a cell. Now, if you stand up close and look, you'll see that the nuclei are on the periphery. That means the skeletal. So why, why are they like that? Because those glands have insinuated themselves between the muscle and pushed them aside. Okay? So don't be fooled. Yes, don't be fooled. Now, what are the four... Hmm? Yes, so what are the layers of the pharynx now. So, so the, the first layer starting from inside out is the mucosa and then below that is the pharyngobacillar fascia. So that's two. Then after that we have the constrictors and then after that we have the mucopharyngeal fascia. So you're not seeing the pharyngobacillar here. Give me a, give me a, a reasonable answer. The pharyngobacillar. The pharyngobacillar is throughout the entire pharynx. No, guys, remember now, the pharyngobacillar is connected to Sino. Mm -hmm. The lamina propria. Yeah. So the pharyngobacillar is the same tissue of the lamina propria. Mm -hmm. So we need to see the H and D. You don't differentiate the two of them. The two of them is the same thing. You understand that? Yeah, same thing. Hmm? <laughs> That's oropharynx. Oropharynx. Oropharynx, right? It looks like. No, no, no. I'd say with H and D, it's, you can differentiate the pharyngobacillar from the lamina proper because both of them is the same tissue, right? And if I were to take the, the bucopharyngeal and put it beside it, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference either. The only reason why you can tell the, pharyngo, the bucopharyngeal is because it's after the muscle. Uh, so, that's that big something when I say That? Yeah. I just asked you guys what that is. That's that. The big circular structure in the center of the big yeah. So, he's asking me what it is, but we discussed that five minutes ago. I think that's when he went to the bathroom, right? Eh? Oh, okay. I'm more now, but since you guys are so rested, we can stop after this. Now look on that slide. I agree that's a little dark on the right side, but look on it. Look on it. So look here, see the thing I'm pointing on? I want you to tell me the motor supply to it. So just look on this slide properly, you know? Yes, guys. Okay, look on the problem I have with you guys. Now this is that over here is that over here is not that. So look on this side. So this is stratified squamous, and this is stratified squamous too. But I'm seeing some things over here look like skin. This is our hair follicle, and I'm seeing some hair follicles here, right? But then don't see the same hair follicles on that side. And I'm seeing a piece of muscle in between the two layers. So what is that slide? Lip. 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 Good. Yeah, so you see, what you want now, me in the exam to come and say, yeah. that side only has stratified skin. Look on the thing properly. Is there a way you can do that better? Huh? Yeah. Anyway, 
you guys, this is a slide of the lip and the muscle in the middle is the orbicularis oris. What's the nerve supply? Facial yeah. nerve. What's the sensory supply to the part crossed by the point of? You can see. Right, you can either say submental nerve or inferior alveolar or um, infraorbital nerve. Right? Good. Now, so this layer would be the cutaneous layer. This layer here is the cutaneous <laughs> layer. And this layer is the mucosal layer. What is the layer between the, the part between the two? Vermilion border. Thank you. Vermilion border. That's a question. Oh, my God. Oh. Okay. Don't say it no, guys. Don't, don't shout out anything. Just look. So now, look on that slide, guys. Come, tell me what the slide is right now. One word. Well, two words. Well, three. You. <laughs> This structure is exposed to abrasion. Mm -hmm. Guys, do you see an inner circle or longitudinal? No, this is not GI. And if it is not GI and it's exposed to friction, it must be what? Tongue or lip. Does it look like the one we saw before? No. So this is what? Tongue. If it is tongue, look on the glands. What kind of glands are those? Those are mucus glands. Mucus. So what is this just like up? Posterior third of the tongue. Mm. Uh, now look at the muscle, you know, this one or the muscle is pitchy patchy all over the place. What do you see between the muscle fibers? Fat, that fat. That's a feature of tongue, guys. No adipose tissue between the muscle fibers. Look, look, these clear areas is fat enough. All of these areas here is fat. Clearly it's fat, fat. This is tongue. No. What would you say is the parasympathetic innovation of those glands? You can't say nothing else. Yeah. It's only one nerve coming here anyway, apart from the motor nerve, right? Mm -hmm. Good. What's the sensory innovation to the mucosa? Glossopharyngeal nerve. Is it the same glossopharyngeal that provides motor supplies in the muscle? No. no. Is it? Hypoglossopharyngeal nerve. Thank you. All right. Thank you, bro. I've been wrong. Sir, you're going too bad now, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, look on that now. <laughs> Guys, look on that slide. I just take, you know what I do? One glimpse in them. Left eye, just look on it. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. We're not on the left. No, man, but you should be. You should be. And if you're not exactly on my left, you should at least be a little lower. But not oh, way down no, there. That's really not down in down the earth. Uh, <laughs> not sub. I mean, <laughs> not subterrestrial, guys. I propose to you that you now are subterrestrial. Oh, this is quite funny. So you're like <laughs> earthworm. <laughs> All right. So look here now. Yeah, you're a platy helmet. Platy helmet. You can't get lower than platy helmets, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, come. Cool. All right, guys. So the first thing is this, guys. Lobulated, guys. Lobulated. See that? Lobulated. Once it's lobulated, liver, pancreas, salivary glands. Is this liver? No. no. Good. Liver is a solid, pink thing. So that's not. Is it pancreas? No. no. Why? Because pancreas purple. Yeah. So what is this then? It's a mixed gland. It's a mixed gland. And look here, from this distance, it appears that the pale ones are predominant. So this is sublingual. I have to find a way to sort of commentate in the ears in the exam. Yeah, ear, like what George Bush did in the election, right? In the debate, while he was debating John Kerry, some 
Yada, they saw like a thing on the back there. Oh, yeah, and he had yeah, piece. And somebody telling him what to say. <laughs> and he won the debate. <laughs> America is a crazy place. No, that's sublingual glance, guys, because it's predominantly mucus. Tell me something about the sublingual. We have, you say we have a minority of serous ACNI and a majority of mucus. We also have serous demiloons in this. Okay? Serous demiloons. Everybody get that? All right, good. Now, what's the parasympathetic innovation? Submandibular ganglion. Where are the preganglionic parasympathetic cell bodies located? Here is the Good. So you see, you have the answer, and you just need to match the answer with this, with this slide. And you're not doing that. Beautiful. Look at that. This is excellent. All right. So again, this is a slide of the GI tract. So I'm going to say now, okay, this is GI. Let me go straight to the mucosa now. Is there stratified squamous there? No. Mm -hmm. Not esophagus, not pharynx, not anal canal. That means this is either large or small intestine or stomach. Good. So what is it? So why you say that? Holy fuck up blood cells. Anywhere. Yeah, first of all, don't say where. First of all, the only place they could be is up here. In the mucosa, you see these pale things? Mm -hmm. These are intestinal glands that are loaded with goblet cells. Loaded. 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 Riddled. Riddled, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that word though. <laughs> I see the word they use on the news and they said they found a body and it was riddled with gunshot wounds. <laughs> I get traumatized when I hear that word. <laughs> right? Anyway, so that's, that's it. So what is this a slide of? That's vague, man. This is rectum. Rectum. Remember now, large intestine must either be rectum, colon, or appendix. I see no little nodules. Maybe that little one there. Yeah, that's this is not. So it's one. So it's not appendix. It's not appendix. It's a circle. Right? I don't see no teeny coli. It's not, a, it's not the colon. But this is the rectum. You see? I'm getting worried, guys. I'm worried. I'm worried. Seriously, I'm worried. So are we. Get there. Wait, that's the. Uh, oh, the question, give it away. Why look like it's on screen? All right, come. Finally, now. Finally, my brethren. Uh -huh. Finally, identify this slide. One look. It can only be one of two things. One of two things. It's a junction. Thank you. And if it's a junction, what junction should be? What junction is it? All right. I put it to you that this is pylora duodenal junction. Can we move on now? No. Why not? Why is, why is that not pylora duodenal? No, give me something positive. It has stratified squamous. Good. So once the junction has stratified squamous, it must either be in or rectal. See the stratified squamous there? It must either be in or rectal or cardioesophageal. So of the four GI junctions, this can only be one of two. Can be pylora duodenal, can be ileocecal. Because those don't have no stratified squamous. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else that we need to see? Good. And what are the glands? No, but so, so you're saying that those glands are crossed by the point or mucus? That's what he's saying? They're pale. Yeah. Good. So just say it. Don't be afraid to say it. Because we don't have no pale glands in the lamina propria of the inner rectal junction. We don't have none. Aren't you? Good. Now, if you could see on that side now, those purple things are gastric glands. And the purple cells are zymogen cells. So if you could see, if you could stand up close there and see on the other side, that would be the cardiac part of the stomach. The part that don't have no stratified squamous is stomach. And that cardiac part of the stomach has two sets of glands there, gastric glands and cardiac glands. And the gastric glands are normal gastric glands with parietal cells, zymogen cells, mucous neck cells, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm finished. I'm <laughs> I have more guys, but I'm traumatized. Huh? <laughs>